totally love cheese and making cheese has been a passion of mine for years. I started making cheese at my own, at my home, making it in my kitchen and wanted to learn a bit more about cheese making. So I've, I've taken some classes and I love sharing it with other people and getting other people excited about making cheese as well. Well, I'm so glad you guys are all here today. I'm really excited. And I want to say a big thank you to the local market co-op. I know they're not in the room right now, but uh, they won a, a grant through the cooperators last year and that allowed them to offer all these classes for free, which is totally amazing. So we're going to get started talking about ingredients to start. So today we're using cow's milk for all the cheeses. Um, it is made from whole, whole milk and I like, I like whole milk because that's very similar to what uh, the milk is when it comes out of the cow. So it's 3.25% milk fat. Um, both of these have been pasteurized. But there's three other basic ingredients that are in the majority of cheeses out there. What are some of them? Can you name one of them? Rennet. Rennet, yes. <laughs> So we've got some rennet right here. Rennet is, it's a brown liquid um, and it consists of an enzyme taken from the fourth stomach of uh, a cow or ca like a calf, lamb or a kid. Um, and it's used to coagulate the milk. So turn it from a liquid to a solid. Um, there's also vegetarian options out there. Um, one called microbial enzyme. It's, it's a little, uh, little less expensive than, than rennet. So we've got milk and rennet so far. There's two of the four ingredients. Salt. Salt is a really important ingredient when it comes to cheese. It serves a number of functions. Um, the most basic function it, it serves is, is it pre preserves the cheese. And cheese is basically preserved milk. So back in the day before refrigeration, um, people would, they'd want to extend the shelf life of their milk because on its own, it only has a shelf life of like a few hours if you're in a hot Mediterranean country. Um, so to preserve it, they'd uh, acidify it, turn it into something similar to yogurt. So most cultures around the Mediterranean have a yogurt-like cheese. Um, or they'd uh, add salt and turn it into cheese, extract more moisture, and then the cheese can last for years. In Greece, they have feta cheese, which is a cheese submerged in a brine so that it maintains its shelf life. Um, so those are three of the main ingredients. Number four, what do you think? Um, Acid is used in some cheeses, and we're going to use that in one today. But for 95% of the cheeses, there's another ingredient. Bacteria. Bacteria culture. So the one that we're going to be using today is what's called a mesophilic culture. So it's one that loves medium temperatures. If you're making like an aged cheese, you need uh, a different kind of bacteria for hotter temperatures but this is a great one. It's very versatile. I started in the cheese world years ago selling Canadian cheese at farmers markets in Toronto. Around that time I started like really getting into cheese. I was fascinated by how all cheeses start with the four basic ingredients of milk, salt, bacteria cultures, and rennet. So there's those four ingredients in all cheeses, but there's such a huge world of uh, cheese out there. You can have stinky cheese, aged cheese, fresh cheeses, but they're all made with the same ingredients. So I started learning a bit about, bit about how it's made and started experimenting making cheese at home. And I really wanted to understand the science and uh, microbiology behind it too. So I took um, my cheese making certificate at the Vermont Institute of Artisanal Cheese which unfortunately is no longer around, but at the time they were the place to go for anybody interested in it. And I've been making it at home since and just aging cheese in my basement. In case you guys were interested learning more and uh, getting some ingredients, I brought some uh, order guides for like Canada's only uh, cheese making supply company. They're based out of Cornwall. 
It's called Glengarry Fine Cheese. Um, you can pick one up at the end if you like. And they sell um, bacteria cultures, rennet, all kinds of things. They've got recipes on their website. And they are uh, a wonderful resource for learning how to make cheese. And they, their main specialty is helping people that make cheese at home. We covered three basic recipes showing three totally different techniques. Um, one was queso fresco, which is uh, mainly a rennet coagulated cheese. So to make the queso fresco, we started with some uh, whole milk, it was pasteurized milk, and we added a little bit of bacteria culture and a small spoon, spoonful of rennet. We let that sit for about 45 minutes so that it could solidify and gel. And then once it had turned into like a custard-like consistency, we scooped it into cheese forms and let the whey drain out. Uh, the other was paneer, which is made through heat and acid. And the paneer is really easy to make. You just start with whole milk, heat it up to about 190 degrees Fahrenheit, and then, then add an acid. We added vinegar, about four teaspoons of vinegar for one, one liter of milk. And then that just, it is almost like magic. You get the curds and the way that just separate so quickly. And we uh, spooned out the curds into a little cheese form. And after that, we actually cooked uh, that into some paneer, fried it in a frying pan. And then the third one was the yogurt cheese, which is mainly a uh, created due to the bacteria cultures in the yogurt. The paneer I had never made before, so that was, that was new, um, and I really like paneer. I will make it when I go home, not tonight. And uh, the yogurt cheese, I have had quite a bit of experience making yogurt cheese, and, uh, but he had some ideas on how it could be uh, flavored. But to make yogurt cheese, you take some yogurt. Um, I've got a cheesecloth lined bowl here. I'm just gonna dump the yogurt right in. I like this because it looks quite traditional and so I'm just gonna tie it to a wooden spoon here and we'll let it drain as we continue our cheese making here. It doesn't so much, it's not going to, um, so it's not going to not work if it does. Um, so the purpose of draining it in the cloth here is we just want to get rid of some of the moisture. So it's just going to press under its own weight. It's kind of funny how simple it actually is, but you can have a look here. Uh, the moisture is starting to uh, expel from the, yo the yogurt already. So we're gonna come back to that and add some salt and some spices to that later on. Well, I've always been interested in cheese because I like to eat it, but I've also been curious about making it. And we've got Monforte in town. I visit fromageries wherever I go, travel if I find them just because they're interesting and fun. And, and to find one here at the local is, <laughs> was really handy close to home and perfect, why not? We're gonna have a look at the yogurt cheese now. So this has been draining for about an hour. So look at that, it's uh, very soft. Kind of has the consistency of uh, cottage cheese at this point. There is a special kind of cheesecloth, isn't there, that you can use apart from this one? Um, this is just cheap cheesecloth. You can get it from the dollar store, any grocery store. Um, the Gentle Rain sells unbleached cheesecloth made with like unbleached cotton. So there's lots of possibilities depending on how much you want to spend. One of my favorite ways of using like a, a yogurt cheese is adding like some cinnamon and nutmeg, maple syrup and honey, and it, it almost gives it like a pumpkin pie kind of flavor, but then you can spread that on crackers. 
and it, it just tastes amazing. So you can add so many different seasonings and spices and there's just a world of possibilities with yogurt and cheese. Um, you can keep it in your fridge probably for 10 days or so, um, but I just recommend using it right away. Those three cheeses are all so simple to make. Um, you can make them at home just using the ingredients that you have in your kitchen with the exception of the rennet and the bacteria cultures that are needed for the queso fresco. So they're simple to do. So we covered three different cheeses in the course of an hour. Well, I guess the simplicity, the simplicity of making it, that the basis of cheese is very simple and it's just a matter of how you tweak things that change the whole basis of the cheese. Kelsey did a great job, very approachable, um, and he, he ran a great class. No, oh, I think it's a, such a treat to have this here and to be able to take advantage of it and meet some new people. And I don't know, we're just lucky here in Stratford. <laughs>